Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. This is a day I've been working on, planning for the last eight years. My name is Prontius O'Rahala. My mother was Bridie Klein. As uh, you all know, she was uh, what we call a revolutionary in common a mom. And the reason I'm placing the plaque here today, which Des Buckin is kindly unveiling for us today, is because that's her homestead directly behind on the river where the trees are. And the island to the left was an island that she bequeathed to me and now my cousin has it. This is a very historical day, I think, for Ruski, as this will put Ruski on the map as a place where a revolutionary came from. My mother was a brave woman. She had no fear of anything. She was a genuine person, gold-hearted. I was a bit wild and young to appreciate it. I'm so proud and honored to be here along with the new generation, Josh, my mascot, who always comes to various functions through the centenary year, and who loved my grandfather, Theo Rahali, who was the co-founder of the Volunteers, and the only leader shot in Moore Street, which I've been campaigning to save for the past 17 years, with other grandchildren, i.e. James Connolly, uh, the Camps, and other great names. Now, that's all I've got to say today because I'm a bit emotional about things that are after happening this month. But I'm proud that my mother brought out the sun. So she must be looking down on us. So with that, I'm just going to say three words. This one is for you, Mum. Okay, with that I hand you over to Councillor Des Buckley. Ramatha Proches, Dev Gulair, or Corle, or Corle or Conde in a hot shop, like a smart starry. Colonel Falcher Roy Gulair and Chuck Goruski in you. It's more an honour done, lack filter coin, in honour though, brightly time, and knocked up on shop. Sakai shop, the yen for Jarmuth Gujo. Er an man og kroka a has on fold er son the herden kate bleed o him some of you know me as your local independent county councillor and as a historian who has published 11 books in the presence of Bridie's son Pontius I too wish to welcome you all on this historic occasion Pontius told me and he repeated it today that he had a dream that his mother's memory would be honoured in her native Ruski. Today, that dream has come true. Bridie Klein was born in 1898 and was reared beside Kilianiker Bridge, half a mile upstream from this bridge, right through there. This plaque in her honour is within sight of the place where she was reared. The history I've written shows that her ancestors were very nationalistic and patriotic. In 1998, I wrote a history of 1798 called Leitrim and Longford in 1798. In it, I've recorded that when the Irish rebels were fleeing westwards from the Battle of Ballinamuck, some were saved by John Klein and that he ferried them to his island on the Shannon just behind us here on the left and then across to County Roscommon. That was an extremely brave thing to do at the time because as a verse of the time said "Twas death to harbour a copy. In the land war of the 1870s to 1890s Another John of the same family was in the Anadolf Land League Committee. My ancestors were on that same committee and together they fought to release the greedy grip of the local landlords. It is little wonder then that Bridie Klein went on to be what was called and oft described 
as an extraordinary rebel, fighting injustice and oppression wherever she found it. In 1940, Bridie married Dr. Niall O'Rahale, son of Michael de O'Rahale, the only one of the leaders in 1916 who was killed in action. All of the leaders in 1916 were admirable, admirable and unselfish. Personally, I regard the O'Rahale and Leitrim's famous son, Sean McDermott, as the purest spirits of them all. Bridie Klein was a brave member of Cumann in Dublin. She took the Republican side in the Civil War and, driving an ambulance, she went to the relief of the rebels who were besieged in the Four Courts. The story of Bridie's life is a cross-section of Irish history and she knew all the leading lights in the fight for freedom and at the foundation of the Irish state. Later, later she established her own very successful advertising agency and had bodies like Bordnamona and the hospital sweepstakes as her advertisers. She died in 1971. May the green sod of Ireland rest lightly upon her, her yes J. Gorau Ahana. Bridie Klein richly deserves to be remembered by us all. Because of her own heroic deeds and my ancestors' friendship with her ancestors, it is a huge honour for me to be asked here to unveil this plaque. At a time when appropriate and sane nationalism is being frowned upon and local rural issues are being swept to one side, we must remember and learn from the great heroes and heroines of our past history and salute their unselfish service to the cause of the people of Ireland. Guramila Mahagiv Galair. I now call upon Prunches O'Rahale to assist me in unveiling this plaque to the memory of his mother, one of our greatest ever, that is, Bridie Clive. The bridge was yeah. erected in 1845, the first year of the famine. Okay. okay. And you can see here that the um, chief engineer on it was uh, Thomas Rhodes, and he was also responsible for the engineering work at the harbour in, in uh, at Lowell. Okay. And how long have you been researching her? Uh, since 1971, basically, when we found the papers. But I used to come up here as a child with her. Uh, I used to stop in Drummond, very fond of Drummond and Jamestown, and all around. And she loved uh, the rivers and she loved the wildlife and donkeys. And she was a very rural minded person, but I didn't know how clever she was. She was just fun. She was clever in um, both the business and in revolutionary and planning. Um, what would you like the people of this to remember ever? I, um, I would like to, the people of Ruski, to remember my mom as a revolutionary, an extraordinary revolutionary, who did so much but kept it under her hat, you know. And uh, the secrecy was the, uh, you know, that was the thing on coming around. It was a golden rule. And she kept that secret. I mean, it was extraordinary, as you will see, in the direction of Dr. Mackey Martin. But she, one day she got fed up and she wrote a letter, I want a medal, to the state. And then she decided she wouldn't send it. But I saw it anyway after she died and I decided uh, that the story had to be told. So with Marcus Howard here, wonderful filmmaker, we made the documentary. Good for Marcus. Friday Klein, which was shown last night. And if anybody wants copies of that, they just get in touch with Marcus and he has some here with him. Um, now that the plaque is up across the road in the bridge, and may I say that this year is the Billion of the Manaw, which is the year of the women, the brave women, and not alone that, but my mother was born in July, 
in uh, 1898 and this is actually would be her 120th anniversary so it's very poignant mm. today to be here uh, before I go down under the ground although I'm a different nature for however so her record I decided I asked Geraldine perhaps she typed her record out which we found amongst her belongings after she died not knowing what she had been up to yeah. through the years which is very secret I decided I'd frame it and she typed this herself yeah. and I decided with Geraldine and Frank that they put it on the wall here so anybody coming to the village or walking over the bridge all they have to do is if you want any any of the locals say if you want to know any more about Bridie they'd just go over the road there into the weir to lot. Mm. Now, uh, as I say before, on the bridge, it's very poignant again that that plaque is overlooking uh, both the island that the family owned it, which she bequeathed to me, which now my cousin has, and the old forestry now, which is uh, planted by my cousin. Mm. So with that, I'll just unveil this, and yeah. that'll be on the wall. Um, this is, uh, she typed this in 1962 in her own typewriter uh, from her family home to the secretary of pensions and uh, the, what do you call it, the, 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 the group uh, looking after the pensions. And she says, dear sir, I want a medal. Here is my record. Yours sincerely, as you can see, Bridie O'Rahilly Klein. And this is her record here. It makes interesting reading, but this is the original that she typed. Uh, so on the top left hand corner here you'll see I decided I'd put uh, because that's her own writing and she endorsed the back of the cheque and I just cut it out to put it in there I framed this myself because uh, I just said you know uh, I do it myself but uh, you can see that the address on the uh, endorsement on the back of the cheque is Roebuck House and that's where my father and my mother lived in the Garden Mews and the Roebuck House, of course, once again, was owned by Maud Gahn. Yes. So that's why that makes that historical, and that's why I put it up there. Yes. And on the right-hand side, I put in the drum of the old Drummond Railway uh, Station uh, ticket, because it signifies when my mother got fed up and she just decided to leave Drummond Moor yes. at 19 and uh, go to Edinburgh, and made her way to Edinburgh, and she was... Uh, worked in a shop over there and a little cafe and uh, she was introduced to Dermot Hegarty and was very interested in, poli in nationalist uh, views and republican views so that is where she actually joined up in coming along. When she came back to Ireland she met up with my father through the Irish press, she had a job in there but she was an excellent typist and she could take shorthand, it was just so quick, it was unbelievable and uh, they, they could see the value in her in the, in the, in the coming among organisation, especially with secret notes, and nobody had the short time, very few had it. That's that. So that's my mother there, Bridie. Mm. That's Elizabeth Bloxham beside her. Yeah. And they're so happy as Larry, they're on a march. Yeah. And her beautiful friend, Maura Comfort. And Maura Comfort, uh, was uh, the, the, the two of them were, I mean, the, the whole lot of them were so chummy together with my aunt uh, Evelyn Barry and Sheila Humphreys. That's true. Um, they all ended up anyway in Kilmainham Jail uh, on hunger strike after the house being raided after the four courts. My mother was in the four courts during the bombing of the four courts uh, with Liam Mellows and Rory O'Connor. She actually uh, brought in arms under very, very heavy fire from Collins on the far side of the bridge. I mean, the big eight pounder guns, but however, she drove around a, a barricade with an ambulance. She, I don't know where she got the ambulance from. <laughs> but anyway, it was full of arms, and she got the arms in, and she hit the gate of the, the uh, forecourts with the, uh, with the ambulance. And to this day, you can actually, when we were in court over the, my campaign to save Moore Street, I actually stopped at that gate and said this memorara prayer. That she, that's her, don't worry about it. That's that's right, that's say about me. So uh, she, there's a dent in the gate where she tried to hit the gate. And it's still there on that gate. Um, so that's it. And uh, as I say, I feel mission complete now. Well done. And uh, that Ruski has, uh, she's come back.
So that's it. Now we have the honour, or I have the honour of asking my dear friend Evelyn Campbell, a beautiful songstress and a great friend of ours to all the campaigns, to sing her self-composed song, The Fenian Women Blues, which features in the Bride Wine documentary. And I want to do this because of the 120th anniversary. And thank you, Evelyn. sing that song so beautiful she composed every word yeah, of it yeah, yeah. and she's a wonderful wonderful person and Evelyn, Evelyn drove all the way up here especially 
from to sing it last night or yesterday evening over in the in the in the community hall and here today as you drove all the way from Greystones. Oh, and I really dear. really <laughs> am very grateful to Evelyn. Thank now with that folks History's been made today. I hope you enjoyed being here Most for a bit of history. We have a new historical <gasps> yes. monument or plaque in Ruski Village. Now enjoy yourself because my job is done. Well done. Well done. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you.